Hey guys, welcome to Choba League. Round of eight. This is going to be Michael, bottom left-hand corner. Here's the thing. I'm not sure if this is a different Michael or the same Michael who was the very talented Zerg player. Who actually did quite well. And last time I checked in Rogue City Rumble ended up losing to Hawk. But a very, very talented Zerg player. If that's the same Michael, let me know. Maybe he switched to Protoss. I know that's been a frustration among Zergs. Recently, upper left-hand corner, we have Adame. As the orange Protoss, it's going to be a little bit more PvP. Hopefully we see Agistel's advanced. And I feel like I gave Agistel a little bit of a hard time, at least on the Twitch live broadcast. I want to say this. I really like how scrappy a player he is. He just seems to know how to win. Just seems to know how to win. But I feel like I've had a little bit more difficulty casting PvZ recently because that entire matchup is in a bit of flux. Which, next PvZ I cast, I will discuss a little bit of those ins and outs. Maybe I'll, let it, I'll label it meta. I feel like every once in a while I'm kind of divulging, talking about the meta in a particular commentary. So I think I should like label those games when putting up. I know they're looking at some YouTube comments. There's a bit of complaint. They're saying, okay, actually I like the one a day thing. Um, so what I will do is I will still dump a lot of odds out all at once to catch up with BSL Season 11. But once I'm done with BSL Season 11 and I've moved more into BSL Season 12, I will move more back towards the one a day schedule. I actually think the one-a-day schedule is what I prefer as well, because there's less pressure to just get everything absolutely out. I do know that people that have a bit more free time on their hands and enjoy StarCraft like having everything there and available, though. Including Mr. ES. Shout out to him. Looks like Michael's going to get the better part of this scout. Oh, I also should... Had a big raid from Jorbs last night. Wanted to give him a big shout out as well. Really appreciate him. Warm, fuzzy feelings all the way around. Good dude. Really good dude. Upper left-hand corner. Michael is going to be able to sneak this probe scout in. He's going to see a two-gate opener here from Adame. He has opted for one gate assimilator. So, and again, I feel like in two gate when you're dealing with the ramp, it, it's up to your opponent to mess it up. But this is huge, because on a four player map, when you're opening two gate, what you're hoping is that your opponent is gonna scout you last or later. And here, Adame is gonna have this first sell it produced. He's probably gonna chase that probe around a little bit, but he wants to know, actually, that's brilliant. Th look at this. He's like, okay, this probe got right into my base. I know on probe scout timing, Typically, that means he's actually at the cross position, so redirecting his probe, very heads-up play on Adame, and he's going to move across to see this this initial zealot on the ramp. Unfortunately, really, when you're going for this two-gate pressure, what you want is you want that probe to be already inside the base, and unfortunately, he's just going to have to rely on it attacking upward from behind, and that's a little bit more challenging to execute. I think, as a result, we might see less of a dedication to this from Adame. He has plopped down in a similar an assimilator already. However, when you've produced this many zealots, usually you just want to go ahead and go for it. So once these three zealots come down here, it looks like Michael's even going to be able to get... And here's the thing, yeah, with the map distance, he's probably even going to have three zealots already. Trying to tempt the zealots out already. One does drop down the ramp. He needs to be careful with this. And actually, sneaks the probe through, takes some base damage on his zealot, but at the very least, gets the scouting information he was hoping for. Cybernetics core warping in. And he might be able to swing that probe right back around. And Michael actually abandoning his ramp. Are more zealots being produced? No, the zealots have been halted right there. But that was, I gotta say, a big win for Adame. Because the other critical thing is, is he was just going to completely be lacking in the scouting information. Instead, zealots able to... Wow. Zealot actually walking straight up. Taking a lot of base damage, though. So it is not going to be an even heads-up fight. Probe walking through. Three zealots might be able to mark... Yeah, let's see how many probe kills they get. It's a nice two-on-one situation right there. They're walking and getting one probe kill. Probes being interrupted altogether. Two probe kills. Here's the thing, though. Adame needs to be careful to make sure he has an army to fight the counterattack. One of his zealots now down. Has already gotten three, several probe kills here, though. I'm losing count. I think that's three. And now that Dragoon's going to be able to well against those zealots. And might be able to clean them both up. They're going to run back to home base. They're going to need it. And let's see if that provokes... Well, here's the thing. If Michael does run into Adame at this stage... If he does run into Adame at this stage, Adame is running at two gates and he's just plopped down a third. So he is going to have superior production to fight this. And he's actually getting two Dragoons. So this actually might end up working against Michael overall. Three full health zealots and one full health Dragoon. It looks like he is plopping down and not fully dedicating to this attack because he's going to... He's already looks like halted. Well, maybe not halted. He's, he's going for a Nexus behind this. This will give him maybe a little bit of map control, at least for the short term. Needs to be careful not to overextend and lose these units. Dragoon's sitting on the high ground, firing down below into the Zealot line. But Adame might end up losing his front door. Zealot not quite in position. 
One Zealot down, Probe there trying to defend, and now it is Michael's turn to perhaps do some economic damage. Four Dragoons out. Let's see how quickly they can eliminate this. And it looks like Michael's not even going to go for it. He's just going to hightail it back around. I think upon seeing that, he has a good idea of what he's up against. He's up against a heavier unit count, canceling the Nexus wisely to stay alive and plopping down an additional gateway. He's actually going to need even an another gateway on top of this. I think just seeing... I'm not sure if he got a good look at the third gateway or not. Probably wants a shield battery. But I think he's, he knows he's going up against superior production at the very least. Is abandoning the low ground altogether, which I think is wise. And Michael in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Adame pressing forward with these four zealots. Or four dragoons, sorry. And the dragoon... Doesn't quite get that zealot, although it's going back down to the low ground to get cleaned up. Michael now a little bit at risk. Let's see if more dragoons. No, he's just going to abandon it. For there, for a second there, I'm wondering if he's going to go for the seal, but he's done the damage he was looking to. Here's the thing, though, might be a turnaround win, because this is three gate. We do have a forge. Is there going to be a cannon on the front? If there's a cannon on the front, it needs to warp in now. <laughs> Dynamic is so bad. How are you fixed? Ready? It looks like there's a bit of uh, dynamic. There's a little bit of problem. Pause there, I assume. A little bit of lag. So these players are probably playing in lag, which also plays a big factor. Dark Temple are moving out. That could be the game winner here. There is a cannon warping in now. Right now. And is the other Dark Temple going to move up with him? Nexus plopping down. Michael does have a bit of map control. About halfway finished. Unfortunately... For Michael, I think this cannon is going to warp in just as that Dark Templar arrives. And even if it wasn't, Adame wisely is surrounding everything with these Dragoons. So he can't quite get through. So that Dark Templar probably going to get wiped out nigh instantaneously. Dark Templar is... Oh! Does it sneak through? With five hell sneaks through, Adame blocks the ramp, though. That still might be some dead Dragoons. Oh, no! He gets through! Cannon isn't quite warping in. This is a big shift in events. Just finding that edge. Can work on that cannon. Should be able to kill it. And Adame doesn't even GG and exits. Probably GG's in chat. That's got to be frustrating. Oh, that's got to be frustrating for Adame. Did everything right. And just had a Dragoon slightly out of position. And ends up losing game one. Invisible men. I tell ya. Oof. That's hard. That's hard to watch. Oh my goodness. All right. We'll move on to game two. Michael, I'm I'm not sure if I can call that like a... It's not a solid win, right? It's like a snuck win. But I got to give it to Michael. He did what he needed to do to have a chance to win the match. And it paid off. Moving on to game two. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.